with Bobby Batista and Lou Waters, weekdays 1 Eastern on CNN. Tonight, accusations about Vice President Al Gore dialing for dollars. Well, it kind of is bothersome, a little bit demeaning when you think uh, an incumbent vice president would be called solicitor in chief, uh, making all these phone calls, soliciting money. I'm proud of what I did. I, I do not feel like I did anything wrong, much less illegal. Did the vice president cross the line? From Washington, Crossfire. On the left, Bill Press. On the right, Pat Buchanan. In the crossfire, former Republican National Committee Chairman Haley Barber. And in Los Angeles, former Clinton advisor Dick Morris. Good evening. Welcome to Crossfire. I understood what I did to be legal and appropriate. I thought I was doing the right thing. With those defiant words, Vice President Al Gore defended himself late this afternoon before an unusual White House news conference. Gore was responding to a front-page story in Sunday's Washington Post. Turns out that Gore's controversial appearance at a campaign fundraiser in a Buddhist temple was only the tip of the moneyberg. According to the Post, Gore was actively involved in raising money for the Clinton-Gore campaign, attending coffees, holding his own fundraisers, even making phone calls from the White House asking for big contributions, something the president says he himself never did. But today, the vice president insisted he did nothing illegal nor inappropriate, that he only made calls from the White House on rare occasions, and all those calls were paid for by the DNC. Nevertheless, Gore vowed he would never make any such calls again. The news of Gore's dialing for dollars adds fuel to that never-ending, ever-growing scandal over White House fundraising. Was it, in fact, legal for the vice president to ask for money? Even if legal, was it appropriate? And what effect does this latest news have on Al Gore's squeaky clean reputation and his chances for being the Democratic candidate for president in the year 2000? And now, before we get started, we want you to know all the rumors are true indeed. Pat Buchanan is back. Pat is back not just for tonight, not just for this week. Pat is back for good. Pat Buchanan is back. And Pat, a couple of things. Number one, welcome back. Thank you. It's your seat. You own it, you deserve it, and it's great to have you back in it. Thank you very kindly. We've been here for, started here 15 years ago, when Haley there. was just a child. I was in high school. And, uh, <laughs> now, Pat, number two, as one of our more colorful candidates for president said, lock and load. Dick Morris, uh, you said today you thought the vice president uh, ought to get the Congressional Medal of Honor for what he did. The vice president said, I did nothing wrong. Let me read you the campaign, federal election campaign law very briefly. It shall be unlawful for any person to solicit any contribution in any room or building occupied in the discharge of official duties. Penalty is up to three years in jail. Do you not agree that a special prosecutor ought to decide whether the vice president did something wrong? Well, Pat, one of my few uh, redeeming features in life is that I'm not an attorney. Um, but let me say that I think that the vice president uh, deserves the Congressional Medal of Honor for what he did. <coughs> Uh, the United States would right now be ruled by people who you were as critical as I was, uh, Dole and uh, Kemp, uh, if Al Gore had not taken that telephone, raised money, and gotten the ads on the air to be able to stop the contract from America with passing. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't realize that my good friend Haley Barber would roll over and die and not run ads to answer those for a whole year. But I'm grateful that he did, and I'm grateful that Al Gore Dick, raised the money Dick for Morris. us to be on the air. Dick Morris. Uh, the senator from New Jersey, Mr. Torricelli, said what the vice president did. He's a Democrat. What the vice president did was indefensible. The White House counsel gave directives. No one in the White House can solicit funds in this building. Yeah. Do you not think that this justifies at least a special counsel to I determine whether or not the vice president, when he gets that Congressional Medal of Honor of yours, right. also deserves to be looked at uh, by an independent counsel? Listen, I think that there's a very good Justice Department investigation going on, and I think that the public has finally gotten, after Kenneth Starr's incredibly bad performance, and the ESPY prosecutor getting six of seven counts thrown out by the judge, that the special prosecutors, who have a partisan axe to grind, are a whole lot more suspicious than Department of Justice employees. And let me say that when you get to the issue of Torricelli criticizing Gore, Lee Atwater once said, that's like being called ugly by a frog. Mm -hmm. uh, Bob Torricelli spent 85% of his waking hours on the telephone 
hammering on people for campaign contributions. If it's okay mm -hmm. for senators like Torricelli and well, Nichols, Mr. who is Mr. the Morris. Republican fundraising chairman, why isn't it okay for well, the vice president? Well, let me say to Clinton, now that you're dumping on your own Democrats, you can proceed to do that. But I'm not let me just say that here. some of the Clinton <laughs> folks here that have been with, in touch with us are dumping on one Dick Morris. They're saying that Mr. Morris is super aggressive tactics pressuring the president and vice president back there in the panic days of early 1995 are responsible for this walking up to at least and what many people think cross the line into gross illegality which has gotten this administration in terrible trouble do you think you gave wise counsel back then well i sure do uh somebody asked me if i felt that my hammering on them to raise money so we could get on the air with ads, put them in an embarrassing position. And I said, yeah, president and vice president for four more years. Hey, Eddie Barber, I can't call you Mr. Chairman anymore, right? Well, you can. It wouldn't be accurate. <laughs> but I mean, hey, this is television. Hey, I mean, <laughs> and crossfire. Let's cut right to the chase. What the vice president was doing making these calls from the White House certainly doesn't look good. I mean, the vice president, in effect, admitted that by saying he would never do it again. But was it illegal? Flatly. Flatly Flat, yes or yes, flatly it no? it was flatly illegal. The statute is very plain. What law? Pat what law? Read what law? Let's Section 607 of the Federal Election Campaign Act says, as Pat Buchanan read a while ago, it shall be unlawful for any person to solicit federal campaign contributions in any room or building occupied for the use of the federal government All right, yeah, now the, in this charge of official service. Now look. The, the vice president said today he was exempt from that law. He's not exempt from that law. The president and vice president have a general exemption that most federal employees don't have, that they're allowed to raise money, but nobody, nobody is exempt from the criminal statute that you will not solicit money from a federal building. And the vice president said today on television he did it. All right. It's a three-year penitentiary term yeah. and a $5,000 crime. How many now, now, you know, what's, what's interesting okay. about this is Dick has now told us why. I mean, Dick said, doesn't make any difference what the ends are, what the means are. I don't care. The, the vice president gets uh, the Congressional Medal of Honor, even if he broke the law to do it. Well, Most Americans don't agree with that. Kelly, yeah. every Go single ahead, Republican senator spends about 80% of his time, including Nichols, raising money from those high back chairs in the United States Senate office. But Dick, let me just make a if point. The Russell if, office if building lines the point were illegal to use well, actually, gentlemen, finish half your point the Senate there. should be in jail. Right, as ahead, as might be expected by the audience, that's simply not true. The Congressional, Republican Congressional Campaign Committee, while I was chairman, had their offices in our building. As Dick Armey said yesterday on one of the Sunday shows, those Republicans come over, they leave their offices, mm -hmm. because it is very clearly a violation of the law Ellie, to raise like money me on to federal... Let me, I'll tell you what, Dick, you like I'll let you talk, and when, 15, I get, Dick, when I get through, you can talk. Would you like you me to talk. embarrass Dick, 15 of my former clients but, by yeah, telling you make when I Dick, sat in their on. offices and There's, they made fundraising phone I think calls the embarrassment. I think the embarrassment limit is about as high as it's going to get, so go ahead. But let me okay. just right. say, right. it is clearly against the law, which is why the Republican members of Congress come over to the right. RNC, One. private property, to raise money. All this right, is Bailey. very clear. There's no there's okay. no gray area here. This is very clear. Bailey. Now, let me cut in here for just a second. I want to come back to this law because the lawyers disagree. The Department of Justice has put out a manual for this section of the law, and here's what it says. Prosecutable violations of the law may arise from solicitations that can be characterized as shakedowns of federal personnel. The vice president said today he never asked anybody Different any section federal of the law, Bill. No, no hey, Bill. same you're section changing, of the law. You're changing the subject. It's the two, section of the law that you're talking seven. about is 604. Six and, oh and look, seven. the vice president, it's interesting, was described in the Washington Post story before he admitted to this by one of the donors that he felt like he was being shaken down. Exactly. The issue here is, Bill, you know, he can say what he wants to, but Albert Gore is using federal government property right. and assets to raise money for a political campaign Dick, in direct Dick Morris. violation Haley, of criminal I don't think, law. Dick, Haley, I don't know Dick you... Morris, I got a question for you. Well, wait a sec. I don't the know president Haley... of the United States himself, when everybody talked about those coffees, you know, $100,000 or $50,000, he said, wait a minute, I never solicited anything at those coffees. The president knows where the red line is. And yeah. that's the one fallback position he's got, that at those things he never solicited a dime. Yeah, Al he... Gore has said he used his White House office right. to solicit money Pat, for that campaign. Pat, Mikva, Pat, the Pat, council says Pat you can't Buchanan do that. And, and Haley Barber, 
Do you ever remember in the movie Casablanca when they close down Rick's Cafe and the cop who gets the winnings at the table comes in and says, I'm shocked? shocked to know that gambling is going on here mm -hmm. every single republican and democratic congressman and senator makes hundreds if not thousands of telephone calls from the house and senate office buildings they can't and if you believe that. haley that they leave their united states senate offices to walk over to the reagan center to make their telephone calls from it you know that that isn't true. But Dick Morris, it is illegal for them to do that. If a senator, say chairman of a committee, calls some businessman who's under the jurisdiction of that committee, that is a shakedown, and it's illegal to do it from his office. And to have the vice president of the United States do that is apparently, from what Haley reads, is a direct violation of federal law, whether everybody... Well, Patrick, and, and, and Dick's... Just this is the situation you want that. Guide, Haley. Bill There'll is be no always, government because well, everybody will Bill be in jail. And Bill is... Haley. As <laughs> always, Dick's defense is, well, it's okay, even though it's illegal because everybody's done it. And that is typical of the shame... Including all of your senators, That Haley. is the shameless attitude of this right. administration that right. any means no. justifies re-elected. All right, Haley, now let me ask forward. you this. Here's a letter from Don Nichols inviting major GOP contributors to a fundraiser at the, at the residence of Vice President Dan Quayle. This okay. is fundraising on federal property. Why is it okay for Dan Quayle and not okay for Al Gore? Because it's a very, very big difference. There is no <laughs> solicitation whatsoever. There's no solicitation whatsoever on federal property or paid for with government expense. I, it's like, as Pat said, Bill Clinton says, when we had these yeah. coffees, I never solicited money because I knew that was illegal. If they didn't give money, right, they now, didn't get there. Bill, now, we folks, take a break. Well, hold a second, Dick. We'll get to you when we come back. Okay. And when we come back, we're going to ask you why your good friend, Mr. Ickes, dropped all these files and made them public. You know, I think all vice presidents have had to raise money for their parties, but this one does seem to have gone quite far. And, you know, I think probably all donors feel like there there are some heavy hands in politics too vice president gore was out there i think helped re-elect president clinton he did nothing wrong and nothing illegal and the suggestion of any kind of coercion is completely baseless Classical Thunder, the most explosive collection of music you've ever heard. Get Classical Thunder on two cassettes for just $14.99 or two compact discs for $16.99. You can preview other classical favorites albums. Satisfaction guaranteed. Classical Thunder. Call now. To order Classical Thunder, call 1-800-257-1257. We're sent $14.99 for two cassettes or $16.99 for two CDs plus $3.50 shipping to the address on your screen. Bum, 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 bum. We all like Dyke. Everyone loved Lucy. And who can forget those number one hits? Presenting the number one hits of the 50s. The new album from Your Hit Parade. 24 number one hits. The songs that stayed on top of the charts week after week. Well, I never felt more like singing the blues. The I biggest hits of the decade for just $12.99. Three coins in the fountain. See the pyramids along. These are the songs that meant the most. Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa. From Nat King, King Cole. Name you. To Dean Martin. One girl, but one boy, some grief, some joy. And the wayward wind. 24 number one hits in one collection. Till I was again with you. Then audition other great albums from Just your hit parade. The There's no minimum to buy. 
cancel anytime. Oh, my papa. Remember, the number one hits of the 50s is not in stores. Please order now. My friend. Call 1-800-257-1257. That's 1-800-257-1257. Or send $12.99 for cassette or CD, plus $3.50 shipping to number one hits of the 50s, P.O. Box 2919, Atlanta, Georgia. Remember, you get 24 number one hits of the 50s for just $12.99. So order now. All calls that I made were... Uh, charged to the Democratic National Committee. I was advised there was nothing wrong with that. My counsel tells me there is no controlling legal authority that says there was any violation of any law. Welcome back to Crossfire. Is Al Gore in even deeper hot water than Bill Clinton for using his White House office to solicit money for the 96 campaign? Our guests are two major players in that 1996 campaign, former Republican National Chair Haley Barber, who's now practicing law, and former Clinton advisor Dick Morris, who's with us from Los Angeles. Bill? Chairman Barber, you know, I think sometimes everybody gets the false impression that because they had the White House and the Lincoln bedroom that the Democrats were rolling in money and the Republicans were broke. Let's put up on the screen here how much money was raised in 1996. You know the numbers, Haley. The Democrats, with the Lincoln bedroom and all that other stuff, raised total of 332.3 million you raise 60 percent more congratulations 548.7 million dollars the truth is Haley Clinton and Gore knew you guys were masters at fundraising and they had to do everything they could just to keep up and even with that they didn't keep up Bill I'm surprised you sound like Dick Morris where the test is not whether it was illegal the test was whether we won or lost you know well, I what thought, are your I thought politics what are your was about winning elections what are, your about? Fellow, what are your fellow Democrats Will Rogers once said the reason people sound smarter is now they're listening to their lawyers instead of listening to their consciences what we've got here is is Albert Gore on TV just now saying there is no case, no legal authority what I did is illegal. Well, the reason is it's so obviously illegal, nobody has ever even tried to do it before. Of course there's no case. Haley. This is clearly criminal behavior. Haley, nice try. It's not believable. You guys were out to win. True. And you, you did everything you could to raise every dollar from everywhere you could. I mean, what did the Democrats do that was any different? They broke the law. How, now, now, Albert who Gore says said, that? Well, you do. Very, Albert Gore said that well, he solicited money on federal property. We I never did that. that. I think Morris, that we... Let me give you an example of what was done. Now, there, I mean, Haley and I both worked in the White House. There, I never know of any fundraiser ever held in the White House or any coffee that was a fundraiser. Here's what, now, bribery is the trading of something of value for money. Now, here's the head of 9X. He says he was told he would get a White House coffee with the president, for $100,000 to the Democratic National Committee. He sends the first check off for $35,000. He gets a one-hour coffee with the President of the United States, which I think, to most businessmen, is something of value. First, do you see anything illegal with that? Of course, you're not a lawyer, so you don't. So you, do you see anything wrong with that, Dick Morris? Listen, I, or is that just good tactics and politics no, the, to sell uh, access to the president? Look, there, there is everything wrong with every way that both sides raise money in this corrupt, seamy, seedy process of fundraising. <laughs> the important, that nobody, if you want to apply a good smell test to it, nobody's going to pass that one. And that's why when... Well, let me, the, let me disagree why, with you. Let, I mean, let, me I just, mean, let me just finish answering your question, Pat. The, the point is, by the way, you're the only one that raised money cleanly because you got it all in direct mail. But everybody else who grubs for money is following a law that needs fundamental change. And what mm -hmm. I think the Republicans are missing in this situation is that you can't contain the tide. You but can't Dick, contain what is the, the sense weather. of changing they're the law if the guys saying, won't obey the existing law? Yeah, they're they don't want to change the law, they want to change the subject. We want now that's this, what this is about, about changing saying, the subject. We want this <laughs> as a scandal, <laughs> we don't want this as the precipitator of but reform Dick, legislation. Dick, a final question for me. They're not going to be able to hold that line. All right, let me final question for me, look. I mean, everybody is talking about campaign reform, we've all talked about various aspects of it. But everybody also knows that a big fundraiser at a downtown hotel is fine, whoever does it. But everybody knows when you're getting $100,000 for the Lincoln bedroom, when you're holding coffees and hitting guys up for $50,000 for access to the president, you have crossed a clear line of impropriety, no, you not illegality. Pat. No, you haven't, Pat. Not at all. The important question is not where a guy sleeps. It's what he says when he's awake. 
I would a whole lot rather have somebody stay in the Lincoln bedroom on some kind of stupid ego trip for $100,000 than have them stay out on Motel, Twen Motel 8 on the Beltway and be in the room when the environmental protection laws are being written by the Republican Congress when he represents polluters. As far as I'm concerned, the quid pro quo, the issue of were there policy changes, that's mm -hmm. the question. Right. And the Dick, narrow issue Dick. of illegality is minor Dick. compared to the gaping okay. need let, for reform. Let me pick up on that, on that idea of the quid pro quo here, because I would agree, I think we all do, that the system is corrupt right now because of the money and we ought to change it. Where I'm trying to get you to be honest is that the Clinton-Gore folks are not the first ones to, to abuse the system. I want to talk to you about Dan Quayle again. He was head of something called the Competitive Council to try to, re to reduce red tape. The electric utilities, through the Competitive Council, got an amendment to the clean air to make it easier for them to do business. They gave $242,750 to Bush Quail. Isn't that a quid pro quo? Yeah. And it, doesn't it, that it, smell? It, it absolutely isn't. The Sierra Club, uh -oh. the Sierra Club spent, spent five times that this year trying to elect Democrats for Congress. They got the Clinton administration to expand the government's role over and over. Listen, but that's there are not three the test. Look, Dick Morris wants the test. It's very plain. As he said, being illegal is trivial to Dick Morris. That's a very good that's explanation. What that's what he said. Ellie Barber, the, the, the triviality sadly... of being yeah. illegal. Here's, Here's what folks, we need. Let, let we me need say what Albert Ellie doesn't... Gore. We need Albert Gore to tell the American people and release the records. Release his DNC credit card records. How many calls did he make? He said I he made a few. What's the truth? Did he, are, are we going to find out hey, next Mr. week Barber, that he was making hey, phone calls from Air room. Force 2? Mr. Right, Barber, are we gonna, are we gonna, I have are we sat in the room. Find out Air Force one, two, is one at a time, Haley. All right, I, go I ahead, Dick. my turn. Go ahead, I your turn. I sat in the room with six different currently serving Republican members of the United States Senate <laughs> in their Senate offices. Hmm. When they told me, one minute, please, I was their consultant. And they pick up the telephone and they ask somebody for a campaign contribution. Well, I think Dick, you I ought to go public. I don't think you want you me to name <laughs> what you ought to do. I think what you ought to do, Dick, is go public. Dick, are you looking leadership? for a subpoena? I think that you ought to go public, Dick. I think in the, your usual way, you ought to set the standard for the American people about uh, ethics and proper conduct. For myself, I hope Albert Gore who talks about being squeaky clean, will level with the American people. We'll level with them by turning over all the records. We'll level with them by saying whether they did this from Air Force and God 2. Grant that there's right, we no made, we made that point, Dick. Unfortunately, God that has to be no the last reform. word. Thank you, gentlemen. Dick Morris, thank you from thank Los you. Angeles for joining us. Haley Barber, always a pleasure to see you here in the studio. <laughs> and when we come back, well, Pat Buchanan and I will try to shake each other down and see what we can get. Tonight on CNN's Larry King Live. Still no arrests in the Jean Benet Ramsey murder case. Friends speak out for the first time, and we'll get a case update from Denver District Attorney Bill Ritter. Plus, your calls tonight, 9 Eastern on CNN. My arthritis pain kept waking me up, so I called my doctor. He recommended capsaicin, the ingredient in capsaicin P. It's the topical analgesic ingredient doctors recommend most for arthritis pain. I don't want to live with pain, and I don't have to. Capsaicin P. When you open a can, you get razor-sharp edges that can cut like a knife. But now there's Safety Can. Safety Can actually penetrates the seal of the can, leaving edges that are incredibly smooth and safe. Advanced technology produces 100 pounds of cutting power. You're left with smooth, safe edges. It's amazing. Old-fashioned can openers cut the lid of the can, dropping it into your food. That's dirty. Yuck. But Safety Can's new technology glides through the seal of the can, leaving incredibly smooth edges. And when there's pet food left over, the lid pops back on. Get Safety Can today, only $19.95. Call now and get the safety jar absolutely free. Now you can open any jar or bottle with ease. Safety Can and Safety Jar, both for just $19.95. Call now. To order Safety Can, have your credit card ready and call 1-800-475-0055 or send check or money order for $19.95 plus $5.95 shipping to the address on your screen. Sorry, no CODs. It's a fresh look at the news in the morning with frequent weather reports and sports updates. Join Kitty Pilgrim and Martin Savage for early edition weekdays 7 Eastern on CNN.
And now our top stories. Lawyers for Oklahoma City bombing suspect Timothy McVeigh say they faked a purported confession from McVeigh. And does where you live in America play a big role in how much you weigh? We'll have the answer and much more just ahead on CNN. His name is Zong Fear. His music first swept across Europe. And now, he's sold over 20 million albums. Heartland Music presents Zom Fear, the master of the pan flute, in his all-new collection, Songs of Romance. Twenty-one melodies of love. Relax. And let some fear sweep you away to a world of beauty and romance. $257-1333 to save all COD charges and pay only $14.98 for cassettes or $19.98 for two CDs plus $350 shipping. Use your credit card or send check or money order to Zomphir, P.O. Box 2969, Atlanta, Georgia. Remember, save all COD charges by sending check or money order or use your credit card. Today on CNN Talk Back Live, you've seen them on television. Well, now it's your chance to talk to the Goldman family. I'm Susan Rook. Ask them how they feel about the trial, the media, and O.J. Simpson. Today, 3 Eastern on CNN. To access CNN Interactive on the World Wide Web, call 1-800-WORLDNET, extension CNN, for free Internet software. You know, Pat, one of the first things I learned in politics is that it's important to avoid not just impropriety, but the appearance of impropriety. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that this White House has learned that lesson yet, but I think the real message here is that the system is sick, and now's the time to change it. But, you know, I, I'm stunned at Gore, because I'm very impressed with the guy's way he handles himself, how unseemly it is to make these phone calls on businessmen. You're down for 50000 and then to make them from the White House. I mean, everything inside you when you're a White House would tell you, no, don't do that, not simply a memo from Mikva. Pat, we, we knew he was the most effective vice president in many ways. Now we know he's the most effective in raising money. And until you I change the system, candidates are always going to do it. No, they're not always going to do it. I'm stunned that Gore did it. I see where Clinton said I didn't cross the line. I think that uh, Al Gore has hurt himself very badly with this. All very right. badly. Disagree, but good to have you back. Well, thank you. From the left, I'm Bill Press. Good night for Crossfire. From the right, I'm Pat Buchanan. Join us again tomorrow night for another edition of Crossfire. You can watch the news the world watches. Worldview, the global newscast. Weeknights, 6 Eastern on CNN. How would you make a really great truck? I'd start with a 97 F-Series pickup. Extend the cab and add a third door. Add XLT trim and great-looking aluminum wheels. Put on lots of options. Like automatic, air, power windows and locks, cruise and cassette. Plus, I'd give it a great price. Great. Lowe's design specialists can help you create the kitchen or bath you've always wanted with free computer design services and guaranteed low prices every day. When it comes to home improvement, Lowe's knows. Not bad, Fred. Not bad. Thanks. Pretty good, Fred. Pretty good. <laughs> They're almost as good as the donuts, Fred. Uh -huh. Dunkin' Donuts introduces the Dunkin' Bagel. Crispy on the outside, chewy on the inside. Freshly baked through and through. You know, 
I think you've got something, Fred. Well, thank you. Right here in your own backyard, they make the number one minivan in owner loyalty, the Ohio-built Mercury Villager. And for a very limited time, the quality-built Villager comes with a new standard feature, the $1,500 Ohio-built bonus. The $1,500 Ohio-built bonus is yours when you lease any Villager, including the special edition Villager with new Keep the Kids Apart quad captain's chairs. You'll find the Mercury Villager with the $1,500 Ohio-built bonus right in your own backyard. Imagine yourself in a Mercury now. Kim Wheeler, weekend mornings on Channel 3 News. For a squeaky clean reputation and his chances for being the Democratic candidate for president in the year 2000. And now, before we get started, we want you to know all the rumors are true indeed. Pat Buchanan is back. Pat is back not just for tonight, not just for this week. Pat is back for good. Pat Buchanan is back. And Pat, a couple of things. Number one, welcome back. Thank you. It's your seat. You own it, you deserve it, and it's great to have you back in it. Thank you very kindly. We've been here for, started here 15 years ago, and Haley there. was just a child. There I was in high go. school. Like that. <laughs> now, Pat, number two, as one of our more colorful candidates for president said, lock and load. Dick Morris, uh, you said today you thought the vice president uh, ought to get the Congressional Medal of Honor for what he did. The vice president said, I did nothing wrong. Let me read you the campaign, federal election campaign law very briefly. It shall be unlawful for any person to solicit any contribution in any room or building occupied in the discharge of official duties. Penalty is up to three years in jail. Do you not agree that a special prosecutor right. also deserves to be looked at uh, by an independent counsel? Listen, I think that there's a very good Justice Department investigation going on, and I think that the public has finally gotten, after Kenneth Starr's incredibly bad performance, and the ESPY prosecutor getting six of seven counts thrown out by the judge, that the special prosecutors, who have a partisan axe to grind, are a whole lot more suspicious than Department of Justice employees. And let me say that when you get to the issue of Torricelli criticizing Gore, Lee Atwater once said, that's like being called ugly by a frog. Mm -hmm. uh, Bob Torricelli spent 85% of his waking hours on the telephone hammering on people for campaign contributions. If it's okay mm -hmm. for senators like Torricelli and well, Nichols, Mr. who Mr. is the Morris. Republican fundraising chairman, why isn't it okay for the well, vice president? Well, let me say that Clinton, now that you're dumping on your own Democrats, you can proceed to do that. But I'm not let me just say that here. some of the Clinton <laughs> folks here that have been with, in touch with us are dumping on one Dick Morris. They are saying that Mr. Morris is super aggressive tactics pressuring the president and vice president late this afternoon before an unusual white house news conference gore was responding to a front page story in sunday's washington post turns out that gore's controversial appearance at a campaign fundraiser in a buddhist temple was only the tip of the money berg according to the post gore was actively involved in raising money for the clinton gore campaign attending coffees holding his own fundraisers even making phone calls from the White House asking for big contributions, something the president says he himself never did. But today, the vice president insisted he did nothing illegal nor inappropriate, that he only made calls from the White House on rare occasions, and all those calls were paid for by the DNC. Nevertheless, Gore vowed he would never make any such calls again. The news of Gore's dialing for dollars adds fuel to that never-ending, ever-growing scandal over White House fundraising. Was it in fact legal for the vice president to ask for money? Even if legal, was it appropriate? And what effect does this latest news have on Al Gore? With Bobby Batista and Lou Waters, weekdays 1 Eastern on CNN. Tonight, accusations about Vice President Al Gore dialing for dollars. Well, it kind of is bothersome, a little bit demeaning when you think uh, an incumbent vice president would be called solicitor-in-chief, uh, making all these phone calls soliciting money. I'm proud of what I did. I, I do not feel like I did anything wrong, much less illegal. Did the vice president cross the line? From Washington, Crossfire. On the left, Bill Press. On the right, Pat Buchanan. In the crossfire, former Republican National Committee Chairman Haley Barber. And in Los Angeles, former Clinton advisor Dick Morris. Good evening. Welcome to Crossfire. I understood what I did to be legal and appropriate. I thought I was doing the right thing. With those defiant words, 
Vice President Al Gore defended himself. To decide whether the vice president did something wrong. Well, Pat, one of my few uh, redeeming features in life is that I'm not an attorney. Um, but let me say that I think that the vice president uh, deserves the Congressional Medal of Honor for what he did. <coughs> Uh, the United States would right now be ruled by people who you were as critical as I was, uh, Dole and uh, Kemp, uh, if Al Gore had not taken that telephone, raised money, and gotten the ads on the air to be able to stop the contract from America with passing. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't realize that my good friend Haley Barber would roll over and die and not run ads to answer those for a whole year. But I'm grateful that he did, and I'm grateful that Al Gore Dick, raised the money Dick for Morris. us to be on the air. Dick Morris. Uh, the senator from New Jersey, Mr. Torricelli, said what the vice president did. He's a Democrat. What the vice president did was indefensible. The White House counsel gave directives. No one in the White House can solicit funds in this building. Yeah. Do you not think that this justifies at least a special counsel to I determine whether or not the vice president, when he gets that Congressional Medal of Honor of yours, 